Hi, hotties. It's me, Bussy, and welcome back to Hot or Rat. And today we'll be reviewing episode 8 of RuPaul's Drag Race season 13. It's Rusical Time, a challenge I would never succeed at. And on the main stage, the runway category was Yellow Gorgeous. Before we get started, I want to remind you to press like if you're happy to see me in drag again, and to press subscribe if you enjoy food. But first, a quick message from today's video sponsor, Adam and Eve, an online retailer for erotic gifts that's been in business for over 49 years and donates 20% of their profits to fight the spread of HIV around the world. AdamandEve.com has 24-7 customer service, a 90-day no-hassle returns policy, and an amazing offer that will keep you coming back for more. Use code BUSSY to get 50% off one item and free shipping in the US and Canada. Because love doesn't end on Valentine's Day, treat yourself and your partner if you've got one all year round. Thanks Adam and Eve for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's pissy that walk. First up, Tina, bring me the cab. <laughs> That's Tina Burner. She is giving us a taxi cab fantasy, maybe more of like an old school taxi cab. I just know that when Tina saw the category yellow, she about pissed herself because that's one of her three colors. She literally could have worn anything in her wardrobe and it would have made sense for this runway. It's cool. The only thing I really don't like about this look are the headlights on her headlights. I think they're just a tad gauche. They're like those push lamp things that you put by your nightstand or something. I did like though that she had had the burner plates on her bumper. That was very cute. The only thing overall that the outfit was kind of missing for me was that forward thinkingness, right? It seems like Tina is just kind of stuck doing her one sticky campy thing on the runway, which most of the time isn't bad, but I just kind of want to see her really, really step outside of her lane and try something new, you know? That said, we can't get too mad at a gal that's been around town a couple of times. That's why they call her taxi. <gasps> this look is hot in the rusical. I thought that she did really well in her leading role. I thought she gave a really consistent performance. I mean, she really didn't mess up at all. They seem to be kind of mad at the fact that she didn't make any noise when she died, <laughs> which was also funny because Anne Hathaway specifically told Tina, make as much noise as you can before you die. And then she doesn't. But I, I didn't really see bottom three for Miss Tina Burner in the rusical. In fact, if I came across her personal data, I might just keep it. I think her performance was hot. Next up, she'll take her ostrich eggs sunny side up and a bit runny, and she'll keep the ostrich feathers on her arms as pageant feather cuffs. Firstly, it goes without saying, she looks <gasps> gorgeous. She always does, but I kind of feel like we're getting to a place with Olivia where it's like, yeah, we, we know you are gorgeous. We know you're pretty. But can you give us something more? Can you elevate it to the next level? And although it wasn't the most unique thing we've ever seen, I mean, hell, she beat every single one of those other bitches <gasps> in the beauty category tonight. This look was hot. But let's talk about that rusical. I was so surprised they let her get away with wearing like a tank top, a gray tank top at that, jeans and some sneaker heels. Why did they let things like that slide here in Drag Race US? But over on Drag Race UK, they're reading girls to fill for wearing H&M. Make it make sense. Regarding her actual performance though, it was a very safe choice. She smiles and she lights up the whole stage. You don't want her to stop singing. You don't want her to stop performing. Was it a standout of the night for me? Not necessarily, but really good nonetheless. This performance was indeed hot. Next up, suspender. I hardly, just kidding. Simone on the runway tonight, oh my God, as always, looks fabulous. She's wearing the high fashion streetwear Versace collection from New York City itself, but in space. I think a really high point of her outfit and look in general is that hair, oh my God. There is just something about Simone's hair every single time. It, it looks so real. You zoom in on that lace and like, you're like, okay, that's like parted and shit. Like you can see her scalp, Simone. Chef's kiss. This is like that Y2K rave girl, but all grown up and I guess inherited millions of dollars. She looks fabulous, fun, flirty, 30, thriving. And she had me at yellow. This look is hot. <laughs> However, her performance in the rusical was not a ray of light. Girl, she sent me a friend request. I would hit that block, block, block button. I don't know what happened. It was like she was the physical performance embodiment of please don't look at me with those sunglasses. She was like literally trying to hide in the background. She was Damien and Mean Girls at the girls little apology circle moment pretending that she wasn't there. Anyways, this performance was a 
Next up, she's six seasons too late to the Shakespeare challenge. It's Utica. I love that all of Utica's looks are unique, custom Utica couture, if you will, because you kind of start to see these patterns where she is tying together certain looks. Her promo yarn ball look is immediately what my mind went to when I saw this. You just saw it and you're just like, yeah, mm -hmm, Utica made that, it's her. It has her stamp on it, I love that. She's got those little, you know, medieval Renaissance space buns that the girls were wearing back in with the little beaded napkins in there as well. Smart details very of the era. The only critique that I have for it is I wish there was a little more fabric on the middle part of that sideless gown. It's just a little too thin there and, and the yellow like zoot suit underneath it is kind of like sticking out a bit too much for me, if you know what I mean? But honey, that's a small, small critique. I mean, if you tried to look this good on the runway, you'd go Baroque trying. <laughs> Her look was in the rusical. She did great. She got the edit in this episode where it was like, oh, she's gonna flop, she's gonna fail, she's fumbling and tumbling all over her lyrics. But then when it came time to shine, she hit every single one of those lyrics on beat and with like gumption. She really did that. I actually was confused that she wasn't in the top three. I think she deserved it. I don't know, they kind of overlooked her maybe in favor of the little Russian duo, which I'll talk about here in just a second. But Utica, well, I super liked her performance. It was hot. Hold up. Are you thirsty? It's Candy Muse, and she's brought the lemonade to the runway. Candy, you look tucking gorgeous on the runway. Seriously, this was a really shining moment for you. I love that she did the Beyonce lemonade reference, but very much made it her own. She put all the sunflowers in the hair to really make everything pop and tie everything together. If I was gonna change something small, probably would have got rid of the necklace. That didn't make a lot of sense for me. And I was looking for her bat, cause Reddit said she had a pretty big one, but I didn't see it. Anyways, yellow, but make it hoe. This look was in the rusical. It was a floppity floppity, flippity floppity, fishity floppity mama, <laughs> wasn't it? There was like a surprising amount of auto-tune added to her voice. I don't know if that was like intentional to make her sound bad or it was just part of her character. I don't know. She didn't really do a lot for me on the main stage tonight. It was definitely a bottom two performance for me and I'm swiping left. It was a whack. Next up, she's waiting outside, but not for more than one minute. If you don't make it out there and get in there right now, she's going to drive away and charge you for the ride anyways. It's Elliot with two T's. Overall, I think this was a really solid take on Taxi. My critiques here though are like, how many times are we gonna see that shoulder pad silhouette on her on the runway? It's like every single time. I'm like, girl, give me something new. I'm tired, tired of the overblown 80 shoulder pad thing. Let's move on. That said, considered on its own, absent of the knowledge of what she's done on the runway for all of the past episodes, I think she looks great. It was a much more fresher and fashion forward way to do a take on Taxi than like, let's say Tina did. I like what Ellie you did here. This look was hot with two T's. But I do have a question for you. Of our two taxi cabbies tonight, who wore it better? Let me know down in the comments below. Next up, did you miss me? <laughs> it's Rose. She is doing a The Mask reference. This was uh, one of my favorite movies as a kid, but it was also one of those movies that I think was mm, a little bit ahead of its time and so bizarre and surreal. It kind of almost just fades into a fever dream in your mind. But as much as I love, <gasps> that movie. I do not like Rose's interpretation. Honestly, I don't think the face was green enough. I think if we are going to do the mask, mama, I wanna see some prosthetics. You can't be in less drag than the actual character from the movie. I also didn't like that she wore hair with this. I think doing it bald with the hat would have been much more appropriate. Like if we're gonna do a reference, let's just do the fucking reference, you know? Make it your own then, but I don't think toning it down for a Jim Carrey character, that wasn't the right choice. On top of the fact, of course, that the outfit is orange. <laughs> Girl, Miss Rose needs to put a mask on it and cover it up. This was a rat. But in the rusical, this was her moment. I have never felt more proud of a contestant on RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm dead serious. Like I finally fell in love with Rose and it just had to see her sing like she was on Broadway and that bitch <gasps> can belt it, my God. I also loved seeing her win this challenge because I know Jan was sitting at home like foaming at the mouth. <laughs> Rosé, Rosé. This performance was hot. Next up, y'all, we've got a trending hashtag and it is Medusa. It's Denali. Seriously though, wh what's going on with the Medusa thing? Like we just saw on Drag Race Holland, Room's alternate first look that she wanted to do as Medusa. And then we just saw Veronica Green do it on Drag Race UK. Oh, someone else on Drag Race UK did Medusa on that same runway. And now here we are with Miss Denali doing it. 
I smell a conspiracy theory. That said, for as much as I've seen Medusa done, Denali did it different. She did Medusa if she was a boa constrictor. Specifically, the boa constrictor from the Britney Spears performance. You know the one. By the way, hashtag free Britney. This was everything. This gave me life. I'm like, why don't you come around and <laughs> choke me sometime? <laughs> this look is <laughs> in the musical. I was really happy that Rose got her time to shine, but girl Denali could have had that win too. I mean, if she had the leading role, uh, it was hers to take. You know, she was a little bit held back by her role, the little Russian twin bot thing with Gottmik. I think of the two, Denali did it better. Jamal said it best to Gottmik when he was critiquing her. He basically said, you kept up with Denali. <laughs> That kind of back can kind of compliment. That is the drag race shade that I live for. Denali, she killed it. I'm putting her in the <laughs> category tonight. Next up, it's got five star crash ratings. Mick, y'all, is this the season of <laughs> accidentally reusing runways or what? Like the number of times that we've seen this accidentally happen on the runway, Olivia doing Simone's boxer look, the two taxi looks on the runway tonight, and now the crash dummy that we've seen Denali do already back in the ball. That's sad. That doesn't mean this look wasn't sickening as hell. I lived for it. It was giving me like yellow toxic plasma demon crash dummy. I also thought it was super fun that the whole thing is also very um cyberpunk, kind of matrix but make it crash dummy. I don't know, it's really great. She really is crashing the system. This look is <laughs> in the rusical, however. <gasps> so I gotta call Shane. I gotta call it. We know Gottmik is not a dancer, okay? We saw, what, two, three episodes ago? She, they hid her whole entire performance with Tina Burner's amazingness. And then I think it's no coincidence that in the rusical, she got a part with choreography that she could kind of flub and have a little free form rock and roll moment. You know, just, it was more about making it cool than actually following specific steps and doing things according to certain timing. Hmm, girl, I'm not saying they're playing favorites, but they might be playing favorites. Regardless, Gottmik did amazing tonight. But I think for me, this performance was more of a safe than a top three. But the performance was hot. So, Rose takes the win, and in our bottom two are Simone and Candy Muse. I think all of that was so right. This was one of those episodes where you just totally agree kind of with everything that's happening. Or maybe you didn't, and that's fine too. Let me know what you were thinking down in the comments below. But that lip sync... Wow. I was shook. They had me, mama. They got me, gal. Go watch my lip sync reaction on my Patreon at patreon.com slash bussyqueen. Every week, I do exclusive reactions to lip syncs of Drag Race UK and Drag Race US. It's my raw, unfiltered me, bussy, and the raw. Who doesn't love a raw bussy? Concerning the outcome, I love that it was a double save, but I actually kind of thought Candy won that lip sync. Something about her energy there was just a little more amped up than Simone's. And y'all know, y'all know I love Simone. I would give her the crowd right now if I could just based on her runways, but Candy did it for me tonight. As for my hottest, hot on the runway, tonight it goes to Denali. I also asked my patrons to vote for their hottest hot, and this week they've chosen Gottmik. As always, I want to say thank you so much to all of my generous patrons that make my channel possible. And I want to give a special shout out to Anthony Bradley, Cameron, Christopher Evan, Freddy, DJ Bearclaw, Glenn, Got the Morms, Jenny, Gen X, Jonah, Johnny, Kazuko, Kevin, Kiki and John, Olympus Mons, Venus, Ron, Rawr. Ruth, Shannon Sky, Sunshine, Superplan, Tina, Timothy, and Tony, who are all supporting me at the hottest here. An Angel, Caroline, Craig, Hope, JB, Marty and Cheesy Boy, Matthew, Nurse Luca, Rochambeau, Sailor, Timotheus, and Tom, who were all supporting me at the Bussy Queen Collector tier. Join my Patreon by clicking the link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see y'all next week. Love ya. Bye. <laughs> RuPaul is gonna say that joke every single runway, I swear to God. I think I just had a stroke.